All right, so this video is for live bands and uh, live artists that you know, are playing more regular instruments like drums, bass, guitar, as opposed to doing everything in the box electronically. I know a lot of my tutorials kind of seem to gear towards electronic music, even though they can be applied to anything. But this one's specifically for live bands. I want to give you some ideas on how to record with Ableton and also how you could use it in a live performance situation as well. So the first suggestion that I would make to you is to record everything to a click track. Even later, if you want to speed the track or slow it down just slightly, you can do that after you've done the recording. But what's important here is if you play to a tempo that Ableton understands, then it'll give you the ability to cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and rearrange your song after you've recorded it. So if you want to repeat a chorus part again, or if you want to get rid of a certain part, it's really easy to be very precise about that. So what I would suggest is that you make a simple drum beat uh, to play along to. I mean, of course you could if you want to play along to a click track, like so. But sometimes you may find it easier to just write a basic drum beat that is similar to the song that you're trying to make. And the drummer can play on top of that and uh, you know all the other instruments you know depending on what what instruments you're playing with so i've just got this drum beat here the next thing that you would want to do is come up here to your tempo and figure out what what tempo your song is going to be played at so you could just drag down or up to slow down or speed up the song or So let's say we want it at 124. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, clip here and I can either copy and paste it in or I could just take this and I can drag it up to the lines running left to right and then drag that into the arrange window. And if I come in closely, I could drag this out to however long the track is. So the song is three minutes there we go we've got that the next thing that you'll want to do is in Ableton 9 you've got this icon here and by clicking on that that means that it's going to respond to this clip so if I have let's say volume automation here if that little icon was on it wouldn't be responding to this volume. It would only be playing the loop over here, which doesn't have any automation. So an important distinction. So once you've got your click track or something to play along to, then the next thing is you are going to want to start recording, obviously. And the first thing that you want to do is come down here and set your IO or your ins and outs. And if you're recording several instruments at the same time then you'll need a sound card that has several inputs so in this case i don't have any input options because i haven't yet set my input device so the only devices that i have here right now are two input devices and because i'm recording this video i can't really record what's happening with another sound card so you would choose your input in this case i've only got two inputs here so once that's chosen, I have the option down here to now choose one and two or one or two separately. And if you had eight inputs, then you would be able to choose one, two or three and four or five and six. And then you'd have all the individuals as well. So if you're recording a guitar or a bass or vocals and it's not running through a stereo processor, you're not going to want to choose a stereo input like one and two because what's going to happen is that vocal or bass part is only going to be plugged into one side or the other. So if you're recording a stereo part, you'll notice that after you record it, it's only going to come out of your left or right speaker. So what you want to do is choose the individual channel that you're actually on. And that way you'll record mono, which you'll be able to hear it in both speakers. And if you're recording a, a part that has stereo involved, obviously you're going to want to use uh, stereo tracks. Now once you've chosen that, 
recording is is very simple so let's say you're wanting to record a bass part let's just set this to bass and all I did was was hit uh, command R to rename the the track and then I need to arm this track and by arming it that's to click this record button over here and then you're gonna hit record at the top you'll get a count in of a certain amount of time and then you're off and recording let me just undo what I just did and you, you hear that I, I got a, a four count now if I want an eight count or a different count I can go to my preferences and go to record warp and launch and here's your count in right here so you could just simply say you want a two bar count in four bar I usually like one bar or two bar as a count in so I'm just using one bar here and then that'll give you a, a four count to start playing so you just hit record and now you're played along to the drum part and when you're done you just uh, hit stop now if you're recording uh, multiple instruments at the same time all that means is that you're going to need to plug each instrument into a different input and then choose those inputs uh, from each track. Well, you may notice here that you're only able to arm one track at a time. If you hold down your command or control key if you're using a PC, you'll be able to get multiple tracks at the same time. And then when you hit record, As you can see, it records multiple tracks all at the same time. Okay, so now let's say that you've recorded your bass part here and you screwed up right in this area here. Everything else is great. I mean, obviously you can re-record re the track over again, but if everything sounds really good, what you can do is you can just record this part by doing a punch in and a punch in is pretty easy to do so what you're going to want to do is highlight the section where you had the goof up and then you're going to want to hit command L and that's going to put loop markers right on this area okay once you've got those markers what you'll notice over here is this is saying okay we've got three one and then we've got two bars so what that's saying is the loop starts at 3-1 and then it ends in two bars. That's great. So these icons here are what's going to give you the ability to punch in and punch out. But you don't want to have the loop on because you don't want it to just keep repeating this part. So once you've set your loop points and turned your punch in and punch out on, you're all set to re-record this part. So what you'll do is you'll back up and you could start from the beginning if you want or you could start from further up in the song where you kind of play along until you get to the recording part. So what you'll do now is you'll just simply come over here, arm the track, set your marker where you want to start the track from. So basically you're going to get a count in and then you can start playing along. And as you can see, obviously that wasn't much time, but I just am using a short clip to give you an example. But as you can see, a new part has been recorded right in this area, but it's left the other parts the same. So that is how you correct mistakes and stuff, which is great, especially if you've got more than one person playing at the same time. Each of you might have done a fairly good job, but each of you might have certain parts that you might have goofed on. Uh, then going back and doing some punch-ins could be very helpful. Now the next thing that I can show you is using a MIDI track. Uh, so basically you could use Ableton as a virtual instrument. So if you've got like a controller synth or something like that and you want to play the sounds from inside of Ableton, that's pretty easy to do. What I'll do here is I'll uh, create a MIDI track and then I'll open this up and go to instruments. And let's just drag in operator because that's a, a synth and now, if you have this track armed here, you can play this, play this part 
into your keyboard. All, all you've got to do is make sure that you've got MIDI hooked up to your computer and or through USB and you can access any synth that you would like from a controller keyboard. It, it's also great if you want to you know just record a part in just like you would with a bass line or anything like that. You could just start your track from the beginning. So now I'll just turn the punch in and punch out off here and so let's say we want to record our synth part virtually. It's just the same as recorded bass part, you know. You just get your part set, you arm the track, you come up here, you get a count in. And there you go, you're playing your parts with the virtual synths. So you're not limited to just live instruments, obviously, uh, with Ableton. Let me kind of switch things up just a little bit and give you some pointers for uh, performing live. So if you guys are willing to perform live with the, with the click track, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. Obviously, you can use Ableton as, as a synth, like so, but you can even take it to the next level. Let's say that you've got your songs loaded up okay so you let's say you're playing six songs in a concert or something like that so you could line your songs up here down here in the master you see there's mixer and song tempo you could actually choose the song tempo for each song so let's say I've got one song that's this long at 124 and let's say the next song is 108 and the next song is 157, so forth. This will change the tempo automatically for you for each song. While that's happening as well, you could have your synth that is set up with different sounds. And let me come down here and I'll open up this track. You could actually create what's called a chain instrument. And in, in this case, the way that it works is uh, basically what you do is you can drag in any uh, synth that you want and then you hit command G to group that synth and it creates a group. Now if you come over here and click right here you'll see okay this is the operator instrument and if you want you could go to your different plugins here and I could drag in different synths into here so drag this in and maybe I want to drag in an FM8. It doesn't really matter what you're dragging in. But in other words, you could have all your, your synths all set up on one track. And then you could actually have Ableton change the sounds for you. So in each song, you know, even if you're changing a couple sounds within a song, you could have Ableton do that for you. And the way that you would do that is once you've got this lined up here, you just click here on chain and then uh, this little deal here once you get the bracket you're just going to drag it all the way across in your chain right click hit distribute ranges equally so now you've got your chain and this is selecting the first synth this here will select the second synth this will select the third and so forth and you could have up to 127 128 different synths don't recommend that for your CPU, but it's totally possible to do some pretty crazy stuff. And then what I'll do is I'll right click on this little deal and map it to my macro. So now I've got a chain selector and I'll just give it a color just for the heck of it. So now, as you can see, I'm scrolling from one place to the next. And as you look up here, you'll see that the automation line is moving up and down. So now what I can do is I can select I can say, okay, well, the first song I'm going to use the operator, so that's good. And the second song comes in here. So I'll move this up to somewhere between, let's say, 48 and 80. Great. And then the next song, I'm using the third synth. And that's got to be above 88 to 127. So now I've got three sounds here, okay? what I'm going to do here is uh, 
just so I can make this a little quicker, I'll bring this over here. So let's say I'm playing the songs. I can play one synth part. And then the next song comes in and the so sound automatically changes and And then I play along to that, and then the next song comes up automatically. And I'm just playing random stuff. Uh, but the point is that this here, you can actually choose a chain selector and you can make it select different synth sounds. So you could actually have your whole concert set up uh, for the keyboardist to be playing all virtual synths and having them all controlled inside of Ableton. So those are some tips for live bands who want to start working within Ableton, you know, for both recording and for using live.